gotta be careful not to show the background of my temporary crib because all my books are here. I want y'all niggas sneak in and see what I'm reading right now. Actually, if you want to see something crazy, hold on, I'll show you something crazy. This is what I was reading today. Now, I don't want y'all to flip out, right? I don't, because I know y'all are going to flip out. This is what I was reading today. It's actually a very interesting book. And I know y'all will all go freak out now. The followers are going up. <laughs> We're at 700 some odd people now. Listen, this is a very interesting book. All right? Just be careful with it. <laughs> you got to understand something, bro. For, for a long time, I loved science. You know what I mean? I grew up in a, in a, in a house where I was kind of drawn to that. You got to understand. You know, I... I little experiments, wild ass stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's backwards, genius. Come on, bro. I mean, we doing this sideways. It's so funny when I see people hold a gun like that. What is that, yo? You want to break your wrist, you fucking dummy? With your hand underneath, fool. What do I feel about... Syria. Man, I should dedicate a whole live just to that. I mean, there's there's such thing as an organic resistance. I've met people whose families were destroyed by Assad, and then I've met people who said that these foreign mercenaries came in and burned down their village. So it's very difficult for me to sit here and say that one person is totally right, one person is totally wrong. You have a legacy dictator, and then you have... A series of people who were hired by the CIA and Qatar and the rest of them because keep it real you know you're not doing this just for the money you're doing this because you're being paid by other entities outside the US but I think it's uh, it's very sad because again you, you have the people that are actually caught in the middle where am I um, I'm at a uh, an undisclosed location in New York City the new album coming soon. Yeah, I was in the studio today. Can you go live more often? Yeah, I'm gonna try to go live like like a few times a week just so I can keep you guys updated on the progress. Um, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the respect. Peace, Amethyst. Thank you so much. Let me see. Who will win the finals? Hey, man, all I know is that I, I bet on the Warriors today, so my pocket ain't mad. Thank you for being patiently about the middle passage. What's my biggest motivation, Jesse? Uh, it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of things that motivate me. Obviously, you know, for for the past year or two, I, I definitely was in kind of a down place because of the deaths of my brother Jay Arch, God rest his soul, um, Sean Price, and of course my brother um, Pumpkinhead, among many other people. But, you know, the difference is that when I was a young kid and when we were, like, growing up in the hood and one of our friends died, you know, we had somebody to blame. We could point at somebody, say, man, he got shot, he got killed, you know what I mean? That, that This person got him. All right, we know what we need to do now, you know, but the problem is that my friends all died recently of illnesses, you know? God rest his soul, Jay Arch died um, because he had an epileptic seizure. You know, Pumpkinhead and Sean P passed in their sleep, and I mean, it, it, it was heartbreaking. So to me, it forced me to look inward at myself because my friends weren't dying because somebody shot them. They were dying because they had they had passed away, and it was an illness. So it, it, it really made me look at my health and what I needed to do to get better. Damn, I'm, I'm losing viewers now. I, I need to diss some mumble rappers for there to be 10,000 people on here like there was before? Is that what I need to do? I need to call out names? I need to, to, to name names and that's what y'all want? 
See, that's the sensationalism that's wrong with this thing. And look, that the numbers are going up now. <laughs> this, I need to sensationalize this, huh? I need to smack the shit out of somebody. I need to throw a nigga down a flight of stairs. God damn it, you know how many jokes I, I, I get about throwing people in trash cans and shit like that, dude? Oh my God. And for my family, too, not just regular people. Your pops passed a month ago. I'm really sorry. God rest his soul, brother. You know what I mean? Look, we gained an, an, another 50 followers because of that. Any movies you're looking forward to that's coming out? I went to go see uh, Alien Covenant. It was all right. I saw Get Out. That was a good movie. That was a funny movie. And you got to see it twice because all the little nuances you kind of catch on to. Um, thoughts on Nas. He's always been a class act to me. You know what I mean? Every time I ever met Nas, he was always respectful and cool. I think that, you know, I think that, that the problem with hip hop is that the, the elders and the people in my position who are kind of like the young OGs of the game that, that are in their like late 30s, our only issue is this. We don't care what, what kids dress up like. My brother, I don't care what you dress like. My sister, I don't care what you dress like. My thing is this, is that as, as many rivals re, rivalries as there are in rock and roll and in jazz, you would never hear somebody from jazz be like, oh, fuck Chuck Berry, he old. Or, or uh, you know, fuck Metallica, they're old. No, it's not about age to them. They respect their elders. You see what I mean? So being a person who studied music and actually studied the people who came before me, I had a chance to meet my elders, right? I had a chance to interact with Rakim, with Coogee Rat. I met Karis one at a young age, Buckshot, Black Moon, Smith & Wesson. These were all people that I... I I, I had linked up with, you know what I mean, that I had worked with in some capacity. So I, I even going back as somebody like DJ Tony Tone or or DJ Disco Wiz or, or, or Grandmaster Kaz, these were the legends of their time that, that and still legends now that I got to partake with. And I would never in my life think of being like, oh, fuck them, they're old. Like, that's what I, when, when children say that, I think that's so ignorant because it's like, dude, you might not make it to 30. Matter of fact, you might not be relevant next year. Don't show a man disrespect who laid the foundation for this. Don't show a woman who laid the foundation for this disrespect. You know, that's the problem. Look, if, if someone got on stage with Whitney Houston while she was alive, God rest her soul, and this person had never sung before, and they had a fucking a voice like an albatross, they sounded like a squawking seagull, we would be able to tell the difference in between a professional singer, someone who really sings, and a person who doesn't sing at all. But see, that's the problem with hip-hop, is that a person who doesn't rap and never rapped in their life can get on stage and do some bibbity bobbity boo like, you know what I mean, like Cinderella. Like, bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity boo And that's seen as legitimate and on the same level as a person that really is a lyricist and has a craft. Maybe not to the fans, because they'll say whatever, but to the industry, they're seen as equivalent. And it would be like a person that never played the trumpet before. They got on stage with, like, Branford Marcellus and tried to play the trumpet. That's the problem with with the way I see the culture. It's not about what kids dress like. It's not about what they rap like. I don't care what you rap about. I always say it in the interviews, listen, if you want to rap about selling drugs, that's fine, brother. I don't care about that. I taught in the prison. I told the kids, just make the story interesting. Don't rap about the same thing. Tell me a story that you experienced in life. Don't tell me the story I already, already heard from Jay-Z and from Biggie. You know what I mean? You're turning, you know, Whitney, that's not the point, bro. That's not the point I'm making. I'm just saying that we as a culture need to have the knowledge of self of the forefathers that started the movement before us and then the people that started the movement before them. And that's it. I have no, 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 no opinion about what people rap about. I can't control other people. That's the mistake that a lot of elders make. They feel like they can control young people and tell them what to do. We can't do that. You can never tell other people what to do. You can make a suggestion, but you can't ever tell people what to do. That's not how human beings work. If you tell a human being to not do something, they'll do it just to prove that they can do it. You understand? That's how people work. The point of return is your favorite song. Thank you very much. Any advice for an aspiring upcoming artist? 
I would say that you want to perform not just in the city you're from, but you want to perform all the way around. Know something. I'm from New York City, but if you're in New Jersey or you're in Connecticut right now, or you're in a place like, let's say, Long Island, Pennsylvania, I performed in all those places a lot before I ever really, really, really touched New York as hard as I possibly could. I've made sure to pepper all those places everywhere I could go. So if you live in L.A., Bro, you should be in Diego. You should be in every city in L.A. performing. If you're in Chicago, you should be in the north side, the south side, east, west. I know that's a little bit harder, more complicated. But what I mean is that you should be everywhere around the cities that you're in putting in the work so that people see you out there. If you really are an artist and you really want to do this, you can't just perform for the local people. You have to perform for the people that aren't in your actual area because what you're aiming to do is build your career as an artist. You want to go from being a local artist to being a regional artist and then you go from being a regional artist to a national act and then a global artist means you're getting booked in global festivals all around the world south america europe asia australia that's what happened to me you know what i mean i started doing stuff locally winning battles started doing other shows around the places before you know it people were inviting me to be a regional act and then before long doing worldwide festivals countrywide festivals and now tour everywhere yeah i know it's a radio shirt but we got the harlem the harlem shirt too don't don't sleep on this what do i think oh stop it stop it dude don't ask me about people that have nothing to do with this you know saying a bunch of racist things is not not a positive thing either that's not going to get you any attention i'm not going to shout you out i'm, I'm going to laugh at you you were the main reason I would go to Rock the Bells. Man, let me tell you something. I miss Rock the Bells. And I'm going to tell y'all a funny story. Y'all brought up Nas. I, I got mad love for Nas. I tell him, never told him this story. But one time, uh, my man Poison Pen threw a police barricade on one of his security people. We was trying to leave. <laughs> That's a, I tell you, three in the morning Rock the Bell story. So we were fucking smashed, right? Everybody was just blazing up after, the, after Rock the Bells. It was like a gang of us. And me and Poison Pen and Akir dipped off to the side and we were leaving and a bunch of security guards told us you can't leave. And Poison Pen was like, what are you talking about? This ain't the Bronx tale? Jews can't leave? And the guy goes, no, you're not allowed to leave. And Poison Pen looked at him and he said, so what the fuck I gotta do to get kicked out? I always remember because I started laughing. And the guy goes, yo, while Nas is on stage, no one can come out. And I'm like, yo, dude, we know the homie. We ain't trying to rush the stage. We want to go out, turn right, and go to the parking lot. This nigga turned his back on Penn. So Penn, I looked at Penn, I started laughing. He picks up the police barricade and throws it on three of their backs. And these niggas all fall to the ground, all discombobulated, all fucking call like 20 other security people, right? All of them come to get us. So it's basically us locking you know, shoulders, getting ready to fight 40 people. Like, all the security guards from the backstage basically rushed us. We were going to fight, and all of a sudden, an old dude who was in charge of all of them, this old white dude with a bald-ass head came out, and he told everybody to back the fuck up. And he's like, yo, what's the problem? And I said, yo, there's no problem, man. Your man told us that we couldn't physically leave the venue, and that's bullshit, because our friend is on stage, and we ain't trying to bother him. We're just trying to get to the car. And the dude looked at me, and he goes, are you serious? You just want to go to your car and leave the venue. And he looked at the dude that, that Penn threw the barricade on, and he said, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? He said, are you kidding me? Let these people out of here. So we left. That was it. That's one very, very nonviolent, peaceful, funny, rock the bell story. You don't want to hear the violent ones. And I'm not going to tell them because I don't like doing that. I don't, I don't, I don't glorify that. That's not something to glorify, you know? Let me see. All right. You want me to turn it this way? Is that better for you? Is that better? For, this is better for y'all? Okay. Is this better? Is this better? Hey, Lisa, how you doing? One love. You're a great actress, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Haiti. Sapase, man. I love y'all. I came out to Haiti in uh, 2010. And I'm going to tell y'all another story. I don't care what the fuck people say about Wyclef and Yele and all that. Please, please, please shut the fuck up about him, yo. 
because I seen Wyclef with my own eyes and Jerry Wonder. And even though they may or may not and whatever difficulty they had, I seen Jerry Wonder in the studio and I said, yo, bro, the last time I see you and Wyclef, the two of you were in Wyclef's house in Port-au-Prince with 40 orphans that had lost their parents, right? And basically, they were housing them in Clef's house. So you can't tell me he's a fake or a fraud, all right? He took care of the, the, the kids in his house, and I, I damn near had to go in another room, and I was, I was almost drawn to tears because there was a, a 10-year-old little Haitian girl that had become the, the, the de facto parent for these kids because they didn't have anybody. So... Let me tell you something. My, my experience in Haiti was real. So shout out to you from Haiti. Thank you so much. Um, beef and broccoli. I'm making a beef and broccoli part two. Yeah. For the middle passage. Uh, oh, don't. No, 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 no. We can't talk about Tom Morello. I'm not leaking that joint. <laughs> I'm not leaking that joint. <laughs> no, 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 you know something. You've been talking to somebody, but we're not leaking that. No, 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 no. Y'all are some funny motherfuckers, man. So high. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck so high. Fuck so high. You hear me? There's no such thing as so high, nigga. I live in hard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You go. Your niggas will get me tight. I'm going to pull out the K on y'all. Listen, man. There's no such thing as so high. You fucking people hear me? I hope this goes out to the public. There's no such fucking thing as so high. All right? It's Harlem. These people try to turn my neighborhood into Harlem Heights. It's not Harlem Heights. It's Harlem. And speaking of Harlem and someone wrote Dance with the Devil, if you ever come to Harlem and you see me, I'll show you the building where Dance with the Devil happened. Don't fuck with me. I'd, I'd, I'd never committed that crime. Obviously, I turned it into a story where I changed the perspective of it, but it happened. And the reason that it happened and it became such a famous story is because it kept happening in different ways. Like it happened with... Um, a series of gang members in Newark, New Jersey. Then it, it happened in London, and it was insane because people don't realize that that colonization is too nice a word for rape, genocide, and now people have us doing that to ourselves. So the song was a metaphor for that. You have to understand. Okay, he wasn't glorifying uh, 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 sexual assault in any shape or form. I wish I could read Arabic, but I can't read what you're writing. Was you never know, was that a true story? Yeah, but the only difference with you never know is that I took it in sections, whereas Dance with the Devil was more of a complete story, where I took... You never know. I took the story in sections about different things in my life. So everything that was in there was true, but it was just built in different sections. Yeah. I really did lose uh, a friend of mine to HIV AIDS. I, I, uh, I did go to prison. I did lose a woman I love. You know, they saying I'm angry. Well, you have to understand, bro. If I talk very sweetly and softly, people are going to accuse me. I'm trying to holler at that girl. I get that a lot, and I don't want you, girl, bro. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Um, Golden State Warriors or Cavs. We answered this question, okay? We answered this question. I said that I bet today on the Warriors, and I won. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel like the Cavs have a chance. Ren. I love you too, Yessie. Thank you, Carlo. Say my name so I can go to sleep. All right, Suzu, take your fucking ass to sleep then, you bum. How long have you been live today? The British election. Jeremy Corbyn. I like that guy. Theresa May. <laughs> Oscar Lopez. 
Yeah, I think the people that are pulling out of the PR parade because they're not are suckers and they never really had any respect for our culture or knew anything about us. You know, I even heard Goya was pulling out. Fuck you, Goya. I mean, I still might buy some shit now and then, but I, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about... Really, Looney? Really, is that how you feel about me? Fine. Now I'm not going to sing you a lullaby at all. Breakfast interview. Um, I talked to Charlemagne about that a long time ago when I did his... Uh, his brilliant idiots podcast. So shout to Charlemagne and Andrew. They were really, really uh, cool and respectful. They showed me a lot of love. Uh, but they, uh, what I said is, hey man, I don't want to use up this play right now. I'd rather come back here when I have a record. And he was like, oh yeah, sure. As soon as you have the album out, you know, or the, or the singles out, come through. So big shout out to them. They were they're very kind and very respectful. Um, so I, I have nothing but respect for them. Oui, je parle français très bien aussi. Pourquoi? I read it pretty well too, but it, that's because French is my second language. Yeah. Primero fue español, y después francés, y después de eso, inglés. Pero la razón que yo no tengo acento es porque cuando yo era bien joven, mi papá me llevaba al museo. And my father used to make me say the names of the dinosaurs so that I would practice. And he said, it's about having the muscles in in your tongue, and your mouth, it's some, something like that. He was like, that's why people who grow up speaking another language never get rid of their accent you know what i mean so the names that i heard what names did he make me say again and again okay there's a dinosaur called pachycephalosaurus my father used to make me say that name again and again and again and again um pachycephalosaurus and then there was another dinosaur uh not a dinosaur sorry a pterosaur because they're not dinosaurs uh called rampharynchus which had like a head but without the thing in the back and then it had a tail kind of like an ankylosaurus so and it had like sharp teeth so i would say it again rampharynchus pachycephalosaurus you know pterodon iguanodon uh, uh tylosaur everything and i would continuously go again and again until i had absolutely no accent so that's how i speak all those three languages i really wish i knew how to speak arabic brother but i don't but big shout out to whatever country you're from Yes, that's the dinosaur with the thick skull who aligns its uh, spinal cord and slams into things. No, you're right. Uh, Arabic is, is uh, Spanish is filled with Arabic words. I, I think that in the Middle Ages, Spanish was one, once called el latín de los moros because it had so many, language, so many Arabic words in it. Similar to the way that after the conquest of 1099, uh, English adopted over 15,000 French words because they were completely conquered by what they called Normans. Normans are a mixture of Viking her and Franks from that particular part of the century ever since Rollo the Viking was made the Duke of Normandy. I'm sorry to answer your question in such a complete manner. I wanted to learn their history better than them. Sorry. Yes, it does. Spanish does derive from Latin, but it only has, I believe, a little bit more than 80% lexical similarity. Uh, the one that has the most would be Italian. Thoughts on the Portland terrorist. Yeah, that guy is a terrorist, he's, but he's also a lunatic, which is what most people who commit acts like that are. I, uh, I think those people are nuts. But the problem is that they're seen as a legitimate interpretation of their religion, whereas other people are seen as a deviation. And that's totally incorrect. Smart dude. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I think intelligence comes with the, the humility to be able to learn from people. As long as somebody approaches me with respect and love, they could teach me anything and I'd be willing to learn. But most people who want to confront me about something will sometimes be angry and just say, oh, you know what I mean? And you're not going to teach people anything like that. And maybe, you know, you can back away from your own failure of being a teacher and say, oh, you know, I guess I never wanted to teach you anything. I just, all right, fine. Then what's the point of it, right? You're not helping anybody. You're just serving your own ego. Teaching people means being humble, right? To sympathize means someone with someone means to suffer with them in Greek, right? To learn, you have to suffer with people. If you're going to teach young children from the hood, then you should understand what's going on in their, their neighborhood, 
right? If you're going to teach people who have a, a poor white working class background, here's the funny thing. You know, white people need revolution too. They act like, like black or Latino people the only thing. You know what's funny about that history here in America? They had little white kids working in a steel mill, getting their hands chopped off, right? They had little white kids uh, working in a coal mine. Do you think that we got an eight-hour day? Do you think we got uh, women being able to not work while they're pregnant? Do you think we got uh, unions? Do we think we got a break? Do you think we got an eight-hour day? Do you think we got a seven, 40, 50, 60-hour work week because someone gave that to us? Is that in the the commie section of white American history? No, it's because they've been shitted on by their government. Get out of here. You know what I mean? And I think that's what people need to understand. That black and Latino people, we have our own separate uh, interaction with the state that's based on them trying to rob us of our humanity. Because as much as other people have been oppressed, we're the only ones that have had to justify our humanity. You're right, poverty does know no color, but it's certainly, uh, it's not an accident that people from specific communities are, are marginalized. It's like when you talk about immigration, you can't speak about immigration without uh, talking about the Mexican Repatriation Act. You can't speak about immigration without acknowledging that there are people from Mexico, from El Salvador, from Guatemala that served their country, right? And then they were deported. And realistically speaking, they have more right to be here, even though I don't agree with those wars. Those people who stood a post and, 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 and held their own, they have more right to be here than some chicken hawk Republican who, who dodged the draft or a guy like Ted Nugent who literally shitted in his pants to try to get a deferment. Like, you a coward, my nigga. Really. Don't, don't disrespect those soldiers. Don't disrespect those people who are, 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 are individuals who risked everything. You know, fuck you. Don't do that. Because you ain't no better than them. But somebody asked me. I said this before uh, uh, about the LGBT community and transgender people. I said before that I don't care if you fuck guys or fuck girls. As long as you never fuck me out of any money, I'm never going to have a problem with you. My, my, my faith is, and, and my life is never threatened by what someone else believes if you believe in god or if you're a muslim or a christian or a person of the the the, the jewish faith and you're so threatened by what another person believes then you're off your dean then your faith in christ is weak then your faith in jehovah is is flimsy because you're so pathetic that you are hurt by someone else's beliefs really what the fuck does that have to do with you are you that much of a coward <laughs> Sorry, I just had to go off on that one. You smoking? I'm not smoking, yo. Nah, not right now. Not when I'm like, uh, not when I'm really like working out and trying to get back in shape and, you know. Shout out to Wellington. Wellington! No, I definitely, I'm definitely a boxing fan. I, 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 I love Triple G, but I, I, I want to see Canelo go all the way. I like that kid. He's, he's, he's cut. Yeah, I just think the thing with him is this, is that I feel like he fought Floyd too young in his career. You know what I mean? It was definitely, when I saw that fight, it was a boxing lesson. Any words for your military fans? There's honor in service, but there is no honor in killing people for natural resources that corporations handle. You know, that's not honorable. There's honor in protecting people. There's there's no honor in being a pawn for a bunch of corporations because you're not fighting for freedom. Oh, don't get it twisted. Uh, uh, I I I love Triple G too. He's a, a, a really tough competitor, and I was I was always a, a fan of his. You know, me and me and Vinny, uh, we uh, we argue sometimes about that. He'd be like, you know, a lot about boxing. Yes, I'm sorry. You know a lot about revolution, but you don't know shit about boxing. He would tell me. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Califas, thank you. Would I do a feature with K Reno or Hobson? Um I've never met Hobson, but I, I 
definitely heard some of his stuff. I know he's a talented dude. As for K. Reno, I think we've always kicked that idea around. We just never kind of got around to it. But I do have a lot of love and respect for K. Reno. He's always, I said it before, he's a good dude. Peru, viva Peru, ya sabes. What do I think about veganism? I'm making beef and broccoli part two. For the middle passage, yeah. We got to speak on that. It has to be speak, spoken on. I have a slight delay. Book recommendations. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading this incredible book. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy it. You know what I mean? Uh, but don't get in trouble reading it. Yeah, well, uh, I don't care if you think I'm ugly. Uh, the people who love me think that I look good. So that's really all that matters. Your opinion is irrelevant. Thank you, though. I hope you die in a school bus fire. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I, I've, I've never been bothered by hecklers. Let me see what happened. What else are they asking? You never know the music video. Someone actually made one. It was like an unsanctioned music video that they did. And I was confused about um, what actually was going on. I was like, wait, wait, is this like, I think it's trying to capitalize on this. And it was like, no, no, we did this for like a school project or something. So it was cool. I didn't have a problem with it. But because, you know, they were respectful, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pull the plug. Well, because I own my masters in my publishing and, and everything about me. Yeah, no, no, no. Corporation don't own that. Big Crit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I've done shows with Big Crit before. He's one of the humblest dudes that I've ever met. Really, really good dude, man. Um, is Illuminati real? Uh, I think when people talk about Illuminati, I think I said this on Vlad, but you don't have to go into some extreme idea of what that is. You don't have to make it seem... Yeah, big shout out to Yemen. I mean, God bless your people um, because they're going through hell right now. And we just sold Saudi Arabia uh, over $100 billion worth of weaponry, even though they're getting their asses kicked there. So big shout out to the, to the children, especially the children of Yemen. I send you my heart. You know what I mean? And to the people that are bombing those children in Yemen, I know a little Arabic and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to see you motherfuckers in hell. For bombing those children. Yeah, that's disgusting. You hear me? Yeah, I don't care if you like what I said, nigga. I don't give a fuck about that. Bombing children, you're a fucking disgrace. Bombing the Yemeni children, you're a fucking disgrace. That's it. It ain't about one sector or another. What rappers do I listen to? I, I listen to just about everything. Classical music... What do I think about North Korea? Oh, wow. You know, I think that... I think it's interesting because I met a lot of people from Korea. And not from North Korea, but just from Korea in general. And they say that they, they look at the, the Korean War, they call it the War of Western Aggression. Happy birthday. You know, that situation didn't happen on its own. We're partially responsible for that as well. We just choose to not forget that. In the same way that we uh, pretend that we didn't have any involvement with the uh, 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 civil war in El Salvador. you know. But if you understand, if I came to your house and there was a person that hated you in your house and I gave this person a gun and I said, hey, listen, don't, don't do shit that I wouldn't do. And I laugh and I point at the other person and I close the door and lock it. I'm not bearing no responsibility for what happens to you. I'm partially responsible for what happens to you. So, Syllabu, what's up, yo? I'll make more music eventually. I don't know what you said, Vanilla Shitty. Vanilla Shitty. Shout out to Gorilla Republic. Shout out to Modesto. What do I feel about people who deny global warming? Um, sorry. You know, uh, I think the difference between religion and...
between science. They both serve man in similar ways, even though scientists would tell you no and, and, and religious people would tell you no. But they all answer questions that we want. They give their own theories for it. You know, God's a theory. Hell of a theory, but still a theory. <laughs> Just like evolution. But they're all backed by something, right? They're backed by some kind of facts. So I think what's interesting, though, is that, for example, in religion, you have to believe in religion for it to be true. If you don't believe in religion, then it's not true for you. It doesn't matter, you know. But if you tell me, for example, you don't believe in science, that science don't care if you believe in it or not. It's like, yo, I don't believe in, in, in gravity. I don't care, motherfucker. Fuck you. You don't believe in gravity, but take your ass the fuck one out of here. You idiot. That's what I mean. The only difference is that while science can tell you the what, where, when, how, who, and all this other shit, you know what I mean? And then you have individuals who will flip it and say, well, you know what? Science teaches you all that, but it doesn't teach you morals. It doesn't teach you the should, right? That's what religion and philosophy were supposed to be for. I don't know what the thumbs down are for. Maybe you like bombing Yemeni children, but you and your mother can go to hell then. Yeah, take her with you. Is the orphanage in Afghanistan still going on? Yes. And we're going to create a fund for the people who were the victims of that bomb. Favorite Peruvian dish? Aren't you supposed to be on lock with your little boyfriend somewhere? Uh, Lomo Saltado. Someone asked me before about Palestine. Of course, we're, we're definitely going to speak about that on the Middle Passage. Hey, if you don't like it, you can get the fuck off my feed. And call me back when your dad gets sober. Claro que sí. Siempre habla español. Still... Possible c future collaboration with Sick Jack and yeah, I just spoke to him today. Thoughts on politics in Egypt? Okay, you kicked out a dictator to then install another military dictator. You know, there are a lot of people who work in the field and know a lot more about the history of the Middle East than I do, right? Although I did study it for a long time and I think what people don't realize is that a lot of historians and a lot of contemporary historians are looking at the so-called Arab Spring as really the continuation of the Bush Doctrine. The Bush Doctrine was originally, for all the people listening from the Middle East typing in Arabic, the Bush Doctrine, for those of you who don't know, was when our President Bush, after 9-11, decided that he would knock over all the countries that he felt were against America or who didn't carry America's agenda, right? And while that was supposed to end at the end of the Bush administration, what they actually did was then start knocking over other countries as well. So Libya became a hellhole, a failed state because of that. Um, of course, we had Ben Ali who got kicked out of Tunisia. Um, and then, of course, you see another war in Gaza. So I, I think it, it, it's a continuous cycle. It didn't just end because, you know, Bush got out of power. Oh, man, idea. I miss him. He was a good dude. Yeah, I'll tell you a story about idea. Me and idea had about two or three battles. Think about three battles. The only one of them is on tape. Uh, it was the Rocksteady Finals where we tied, and then he beat me in overtime rounds. We had extra rounds. Um, but he was a wizard. He was a freestyle um, wizard. And I really, really, really appreciated uh the time that I had with him, and I think the, it's sad, the last time I saw him, he was with his mother, and that's the way I want to remember him, all right, that's the way I want to remember my friend idea, the last time I saw him, I was at Soundset, and he was with his moms, and he looked happy, 
And then later on, they told me he had passed. Um, but ever since then, I, I never did. Um, I never did sound set. I don't know why. Cool with Brother Ali, cool with atmosphere, but they never asked me to come back after that. Maybe I gooned it out too much with the homies, but the fuck you want me to say? What do I think about Cuba? Man, that's a long conversation, bro. Very long. I don't think we even have time for that one tonight. Roll up? Nah, because then the little kids are going to see this. How many languages do I speak? A lot. Want me to tell a joke? All right, I'll tell you a joke. <laughs> i tell you a fucked up joke my, my, that I heard in third grade when I was a little kid. Okay? So there's a couple. Are y'all ready for the joke? Can you hear me? Or are we, we really delayed? You want to hear the joke? I'll tell you the joke. And then you can, you can translate it to all your friends. No, you don't want to hear the joke? All right, I won't tell you the joke. You sure? You want to hear it? All right. <sighs> I heard this joke in third grade, which tells you how fucked up the school I was with. So a, a, a young couple uh, were fanatics about aliens, right? They loved aliens. And the two of them constantly try to make contact with aliens. So one night, the, the woman puts up the beacon and the aliens come down from space and they land. And there's two of them, tiny, small, green things. And they, they talk every night. They, they talk that night about like their worlds and all this crazy shit. And, you know, they, they sit down with them. They share ideas. And then the husband and wife say, hey, you know what? I think it would be really interesting if we could trade partners for the night. Right. And the aliens were like, huh? And the husband and wife were like, yeah, we could trade sexual partners. The, 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 the male alien will come with my wife. Oh, you come with the female alien, whatever. And um, so the woman and the man alien went into a room, right? And they can constantly, right, started messing around. So the woman takes off the male alien's like undergarment, whatever, and she sees like a tiny little dick like that, like a tiny, she's like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? The alien twists his left ear, right? And all of a sudden his dick grows really, really long, like a foot long, right? And then the alien twists his right ear and his dick grows really, really fat. And they fuck all night, right? The next morning, the aliens get in their ship and they fly off, right? And then after they fly off, the husband says to the wife, or the, rather the wife says to the husband, how was it? And the husband looks at the wife and says, I don't know. All she did was play with my ears all night. <laughs> it's a, a third grade joke. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of fucked up. Anyway. What else is new?